ahead and making sure that we have the right parameters around that fund and what everything looks like there. Um, if you guys missed it, our uh, Associate Events Fund recently sponsored a spring flower pop by for everybody um, who got their who got their spring flowers for pop by. Um, super excited about that. I know that we've got um, we've got some in person events slated for this year and some additional pop by opportunities. So um, really exciting to have this really unique opportunity in our office to be a part of the um, agent events fund. Um, so we'll be talking about that. And we're also going to be talking a little bit today about showing services um, and, and what that looks like in the market and what that looks like for the future of our office and how we can best serve our agents. So we're going to be really beginning that conversation today. Um, so that's really exciting because that's what we have on deck this afternoon. Um, and immediately after, it's our summer kickoff party. I'm so excited to see you guys, like real life, face to face. Um, we've got uh, we've got food truck coming. We've got lots of fun and entertainment. We've got um, beverages, um, open bar, um, family friendly. We've got lots of fun and excitement on deck this afternoon, and we cannot wait to see you guys and. Um, get face to face. A reminder that the office is open. We are um, um, we are open and here for you, eight thirty to five Monday through Friday, um, and um, um, please proceed within your comfort level. Right, um, masks are optional in the office. We've kind of um, it feels a little bit more business as usual. The only thing that's missing is you. So we're excited to see you today. We're going to have so much fun um, to kick off today. Well, let's continue some of the fun that we've been having. Um, a, a huge shout out and congratulations um, to some of the agents who have already secured their seat for the final round of our Market Center script off. Um, and so um, congratulations to Irene, Ricky, to uh, Gwen, and to Michael Lee for securing their spot in the final round. Um, we'll be looking for one more winner today to take it to the final round. Next week will be, this week and next week will be your last chance um, to enter the script off for your spot in the finals. The winner at the end will get a VIP mega camp experience. Uh, mega camp will be a virtual experience happening um, towards the, at the end of August this year. Your VIP experience will include some, um, um, some KW swag, a prize pack for mega camp, as well as an exclusive um, an exclusive experience for the event itself. So I'm super excited to bring that to you guys. Um, before we dive in, let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Let's take a look. I'm going to get my screen set up so I can see everybody here. all of your pretty faces or your pretty avatars. If you don't want to show me your pretty face, I get it. Just a reminder, I'll get to see it this afternoon when we're live and in person. So no avatars today. It's going to be, it's going to be your living, breathing face. Okay. It's a team meeting. Let's, let's talk about who we are um, at KW. We, uh, as we talked about last week, we love our acronyms. Why? Because acronyms are, are a piece of our language, right? And a culture and a community have a shared language. And so at Keller Williams, we share these pieces of our language, um, including our MVVBP, which you'll see there at the bottom of the screen. That stands for Mission, Visions, Values, Beliefs, and Perspectives. Our mission to have to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. Now, as a company, we've been in business, what, I don't know, almost 40 years, 
I mean, Keller Williams has been around for, for a long time, very early in our existence. Um, our MVVVP came to be, right? Yet as an organization, as people, as a culture, we have grown. And so while the while these have remained true overall over the past over the past 40-ish years, from time to time they do change, right? And so it was somewhere around maybe five years ago or so that our mission expanded. Originally, and for a very long time, Keller Williams has been all about careers worth having, businesses worth owning, and lives worth living. And our world kind of changed, and our vision, our view of business changed. And, and we realized that as people, as an organization, that needed to expand. And, and that expansion needed to include experiences and legacies, because there's, there's more to life than just work right? Um, so what are we leaving behind? And what does it look like in our journey, right? Those are the experiences and the legacy. What is our journey? And what does it look like? What are we leaving behind? So, so we felt it was really important to embody that change. Um, our vision, however, has remained unchanged. It's our vision to be the real estate company of choice for agents and their customers. I tell people all the time, Keller Williams doesn't sell real estate. Nope, the largest real estate in the comp real estate company in the world, 180,000 agents strong, zero sales because you sell real estate, the real estate agent. It is our job to partner with and support real estate agents. And I believe we do that at the highest level. And that's our vision to be the real estate company of choice, not only for you, but also for your clients. Unchanged. All of this time, it is our values, God and family, then business, right? It's about having priority and perspective about who we are and what's important in this world. Our belief system, the why four c 2 ts We actually saw a big change in our belief system last year, right? When we included E, equity, opportunities for all. Now, if you if you were around and you were part of Mega Camp last year and witnessed this monumental vote of our International Agent Leadership Council, then you'll know that that wasn't a top down decision. In fact, the decision to change our Y4C2Ts um, was brought together by uh, our first um, diversity and equity committee here at Keller Williams. So this was an agent initiative. They brought this to the table. And instead of one person at international kind of turning the key and Gary Keller saying, yes, we do or no, we don't. Well, we have a two key approach to who we are as a company. And so this went through our international associate leadership council which meets one to two times a year to vote on items that are fundamental to who we are as a company. Um, things like profit share, our culture, um, the experience and the legacy we leave as an organization. And so we added E, equity, opportunities for all, right? We also added an equity and diversity committee inside of each uh, region and market center. So if you're interested in, in being more involved with uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, then please reach out to us um, and we can give you more information about our local chapter or how you can get involved on a national level. Um, I'm going to go back a second to to um, to continue this conversation, right? Because this was a big awareness that we had last summer that that there may be some blind spots as who we are as a company, who we are in business, and who we are as as a an industry. Um, but something else that came of this is the recognition by Keller Williams Realty International of Juneteenth as an official holiday. So a uh, heads up, Juneteenth is, um, it's the third Friday in June. It's coming up next Friday, the 18th. Um, your office will be closed. We encourage all of you to recognize Juneteenth um, um, is a, as a holiday as well. And this is the day that uh, slavery was effectively ended in the United States, right? This is the day that the, the um, um, 
law passed, right? Um, so definitely something to, to have on your radar, mark your calendars, and just know that, um, that we'll be celebrating Juneteenth next Friday the 18th. All right, what's the perspective? Who are we? Well, we're a technology company that provides the real estate platform that our agents, buyers, and sellers perform. Keller Williams thinks like a top producer, acts like a trainer consultant, and focuses all its activities on service, productivity, and profitability. Now, let's talk about change over the past 40 years. Once upon a time, Keller Williams set out to be uh, the number one real estate company, and it was all about being the agent, right, doing the next transaction. And then there was an awareness around who we are as an organization that says, well, if our agents aren't learning based and continuing to grow who they are as real estate service professionals and business owners, well, then they've got a ceiling in their business, and it's our job to help them unlimit that ceiling take the lid off of it. So what happened was we went from being one of the top real estate companies in the world to putting on our hat to become a training organization. And that's where you might have heard it before. Keller Williams has got a reputation of being the place to go for the best real estate agent training. In fact, um, we've been recognized as being the number one real uh, training company in the world, not just real estate training company, but across all industries. In fact, we've won that award so many times, they had to retire us and put us in the Hall of Fame for training. So we're in the Training Magazine Hall of Fame because we are the number one training company in the world. So mission accomplished. We set out because we knew our agents' lives would be better if we helped to train them better in real estate skills and business skills. And it, it proved to be true. Through that, we became not only the number one training company in the world, but the number one real estate company in the world. And lo and behold, our world is shifting again. And, and Gary Keller recognized that for us to be the best real estate agents we can be, to run the best real estate businesses that we can, we have to keep up with the Joneses, right? And the Joneses are, are into tech. I don't know if you've heard, um, but it's kind of a big deal right now. And there are some big deal tech companies um, that would love nothing more than to get in between you and your client, right? Well, not if we have anything to do about it. So we reinvented ourselves again as a, as a technology company, right? And so now we're not only the number one real estate brokerage in the world, but we also have the number one real estate technology in the world. Um, and so um, thank you to our Market Center Tech Trainer, to Ms. Amy Skillen for being able to bring that technology to us living, breathing every day so that it can impact our business. Um, but that's that's who we are as a as a company, always really looking at what is the future and how do we need to evolve to hit it. So, all right. I see I see lots of super excited people as we roll into our script off today. Yeah, I know Troy's here. He's going to win. That's what I heard him say. He's in it to win it, buddy. <laughs> I love this. Well, by now you guys might know the drill. If you don't know the drill, let me share it with you. Um, we are going to have a very, very friendly role play style script competition right here on Zoom today between two of our agents. Um, each agent will have an opportunity to respond to the same objection. Um, and inside of that, um, they'll, they'll each have an opportunity to respond, and then we get to vote on who we think handled that objection the best. Uh, the winner of that vote um, will go on to have a chance to, um, um, to compete in the final round, which is happening on, I keep thinking it's June 30th. I'm pretty sure it is. Somebody give me a nod Wednesday, June 30th. Yeah, Perfect. Um, if it wasn't June 30th, it is now. No, I'm just kidding. It'll be Wednesday, June 30th at 11 a.m. Uh, we're going to we're going to make that happen. So this is uh, this is your second to last opportunity to be a part of the of the script off. Um, and I want to invite everybody to have the opportunity to participate. The grand prize is this VIP mega camp experience. Um, and along the way, um, I have actual evidence 
nobody, zero participants have injured themselves, cut themselves, hurt themselves in any way, shape or form, nor have they perished. Everyone's still here and alive. Um, and in fact, they're all better for it. Um, and they'll tell you they're better for it. Um, they'll also tell you they were probably terrified when they did it and raising their hand was something they didn't want to do. And now here they are. So the objection handlers that we're working on this week and next week um, come from um, the Keller Williams um, International script offs that they've been doing um, over the past couple of trips to mega camp and family reunion. So they are published. We have a link on our resources page, kwpmresources.com. You can also find it in Outfront Magazine and on KW Connect. So look at those so you can you can study ahead of time. I mean, heck, you could, I mean, there's an objection and a handler right there. You can read that handler right out of the book if you want to, still qualifies. Um, in fact, those are the winning handlers from the previous rounds. So, um, so you have a pretty good shot at getting into the finals simply by reading it out of the script guide. Um, um, when we get to the finals, we will change up the scripts a little bit. Um, if you're curious and interested, um, the Road to Mega Camp script off has started again. Um, it has a it has a really fun name. It's it's uh, it's not Who's Your Script Champion. It's Clash of the Closers, um, which is really really cool. Um, all about objection handlers and um, um, being able to close inside of those scripts. So. Um, I've wasted enough time. I've let you guys get yourself psyched up. I've got you texting your friends, putting each other on the spot. Who's it going to be today? Who will be our first script off participant? Gwen, did you have anybody that you wanted to volunteer today? I was just about to volunteer you again. Oh, all right then. <laughs> okay, now well, that you bring it up. Who else is going to go? I don't know. Who's here? Let's see. I want to volunteer Clinton. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> okay. Yay! Why can't I see Zoom? <laughs> Clinton, I love this. Yeah. Who who yeah. are who are you going up against today? Is you Kelly on gosh. here? Kelly should go. I I don't even know. Let Here's me Kelly. go back to gallery view on this. I know. Kelly's I sitting in a conference room with three other people right now multitasking and being bad so that yeah. means yes sure what i heard <laughs> unanimous yes. um well i wasn't prepared for it i'm actually going to launch with one of my ne folks <laughs> <laughs> that's okay kelly neither was i and, and uh, amy just spoke up and was like oh, sure. sure i'll wing it <laughs> Yep. Ace it, Kelly, you would never tell a client, sorry, I can't give you a listing of great appointment because I wasn't prepared, right? Like, come on. Now. <clears throat> right. I'm just saying How's I was for an objection I handler. I it's steward of listening to the call. I would I was multitasking so you can see like the rest of the conference room. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You're setting the example, Kelly. You're setting the example. All right. You guys are awesome. And this is gonna be a lot of fun. Kelly, you're on the spot. You've got a live audience. You get to call it today, heads or tails? Heads. And it is heads. Would you like to go first or would you like to go second? I'll go second. All right. Hey, Clinton. This buyer's fallen in love with a home. It's $300,000 over their budget. How can you bring them into reality if they can't afford what they've picked out? Uh, 
I can't hear you. I'm sure it's brilliant though. You're on mute. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Uh, okay, uh, okay. All right, Three, 300,000 over their, their, <laughs> their budget. Mm -hmm. um, please tell me that we're not talking about an FHA buyer here. Or can we get, can, we, can I get any parameters on this? I mean, Kelly and I would really appreciate that. No, you know, um, they're $300,000 over their budget. Uh, That's all I've got. They're FHA and contingent Clinton. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I have this great associate that works with me named Kelly Spencer. And I know that she would love to be able to work with you to help you out with your $300,000 deficiency. I love it. Oh my God. That's exactly what I want to say. And, and that is the cruelest thing I could ever do to Kelly. It is. Uh, okay. Um, so here's, here's, my, here's, my, here's my script. Um, so what I understand is that, uh, I mean, I want to say champagne taste and beer budget, but I'm not going to say that. So here's what I would say. I would say, so from what I understand, you have, you have excellent taste in homes and because you have excellent taste in homes, then what we're, what we're working with is we're, you're looking at a home that it appears it's $300,000 above your, uh, above your price point that, that you said you were comfortable paying. So, um, so from what I understand, if this is the type of home that you're interested in, um, I suggest then that we explore other types of financing opportunities or possibly talk to uh, talk about uh, um, exhausting maybe some retirement accounts in order for us to be able to afford this. I would never want to ever tell you no on your dream home, but let's work together and let's figure out a solution so that you're able to get this wonderful home that you're really after. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thanks. Awesome. Ooh, all right. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Hey, Anna, I love that you love this home. This is such a gorgeous home. Now, one of the things when we sat down and chatted is you talked to me about that you were looking at your price range being in the five to $600,000 range and this home is 800,000. So it's about $300,000 over your budget. So Anna, let me ask you this question. Is you know your dream home the most important or is pricing the biggest factor in your purchase? when we are out you know um well it, it's over my budget. did you hear my question <laughs> I, I got most of it is it is budget or dream home more important right exactly yeah. so so i think what you're telling me is your your dream home is more important than your budget so let me ask you this do you have other means to um, increase our purchase price if we were to go look at say this eight hundred thousand dollar price like Anna, I really want to be conscientious of you sticking in your budget, but if you feel like you can stretch the budget and you're still comfortable with looking at an $800,000 home, absolutely will change your search criteria. I just want to make sure that I don't make you, you know, house rich and life poor. So I wouldn't want you to get in the home and then not be able to go out to dinner or celebrate for friends. So tell me what is definitely the most important thing to you. And and the other thing I want to tell you is that, you know, our market's also super competitive. So this $800,000 home could actually end up being over $800,000 and there could be multiple bidders. So I would be doing you an injustice if we agreed to go look at this property and I didn't actually, you know, treat you with honesty and tell you all the parameters that are happening with this particular property in this particular neighborhood. So, you know, how about we sit down and chat about what's really important to you and what your goals are, and then we'll figure out where that ends up being is in your price range. How does that sound? That sounds good. Okay. Cool. All right. That was awesome, guys. And a curveball too. That's, that's a fun conversation to have with a client, isn't it? So fun that Clinton was about to refer them to you, Kelly. Uh, <laughs> I'll take them. <laughs> well, so here we go. The chat is open. Is it Kelly or is it Clinton? Go ahead and, and vote. And so, you know, um, you guys really had had different approaches here, but you were very solution minded. Tell me about why that's why that's important inside of your business and 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 what um, you know what was that mental process to go that way and and stay solution minded rather than hey no it's not in your budget 
right? Shut them down. Yeah. So, so ultimately, we, you know, we're in the consulting business. That, that's what we do. We're, it's not so much sales. It's consulting more than anything else. And so because we're in that, that line of work, our, our job is to really be able to help people to, um, to find out what they're after, but also to help them to discover, I mean, what they can afford in the process. And, and of course, it's not just this person that we're working with. We're not transactional, we're relational, which is one of the reasons why I love Keller Williams and I love this company, I love our office. We're relational. And we know that if we do a great job for these folks that we're gonna do a great job for others. And it's, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not about about us, it's about them. And it's about how we make them feel in the process. And so it's, that's, that's the reason for coming up with solutions, even though it might not be maybe what they wanna hear or, uh, but it's helping them to come to that solution of, Okay, I'm the best agent that you've got. I'm going to be honest with you and be a straight shooter, but um, I am am here to help, and that's truly my heart. So, love that. Kelly, what about you? Is this something that you encounter from time to time? Absolutely, and we just ironically closed on a client that started their price point at $500,000 and we ended up closing on them at 750. And this happened a couple of months ago and we ended up bringing in their parents to help them be able to purchase until they sold their home in Texas. So that's exactly what we did as we sat down and figured out priorities. I stuck within their price point to start with. We looked at some stuff with their parents. Their parents came out here a few days early, looked at stuff. Parents said, there's no way that that's going to happen. So we were able to get them bought in to then contribute some cash and we moved up the price point. But we had to go through that evolution to start with. Like, let's see what's in your price point. Is this really going to work? Because I want to honor where you want to be price wise. And if this does then let's talk about what avenues you have to change that pricing and is that even a feasible option or do we need to cut out some of your wish list and give you your must-haves in those in that price point that you have to stick in yeah yeah i mean sometimes the home they're purchasing today is a stepping stone to that dream home too right so if they can't do what your clients did and bring their parents in to make this happen do you set up a strategy so that they get into that dream home in the next five years as opposed to today and help keep that dream alive because you know sometimes people will just simply fall in love with a property and feel like okay now i've got to wait i've got to wait until i can afford that eight hundred thousand dollar property because i only have a five hundred thousand dollar budget right but there's right. no reason for them to wait because they're building equity. So that's our job is to, again, come from a place of contribution that we want to teach them that they're missing out. If they're paying somebody else's mortgage down, they might as well go ahead and pay their own, build that equity. So now they have even more money to go buy their dream home in the future. But we all have to start somewhere. We don't get to climb Mount Everest without getting to the summit first. And we can't just automatically climb. So we have to start somewhere. So let's figure out what a good somewhere is. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love it, guys. You're both incredible. I, I'm so honored to be in business with you and to get to see you later this afternoon because you both serve on our Associate Leadership Council. So thank you for your service there. Um, Amy. Yes, we the have winner. a winner. First, I want to say that both of those were awesome. But something that really stuck out to me, Kelly, is that you said, I don't want you to be house rich and life poor. I think that's a really important point. Anyway, all that being said, um, Kelly, you are our winner today. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are so phenomenal. Thank you so much for playing. Um, do we have anybody who's up to challenging Kelly for that seat at the finals today? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Kelly, it looks like you're in. We'll see you at the finals on June 30th. Yay, Rory. Sounds awesome. I so need like an applause button. Wouldn't that be so much fun if it was just like, oh. <laughs> You deserve it. You guys both deserve it. That was awesome. Um, round of applause for, for both of you. Congratulations, Kelly. Um, and we will see you on June 30th. 
until then, what do we got? Hey, Patrick, are you still with us? I don't know how long he could stay. We ran over his time. Um, if he hops back on, we'll dive into Patrick, but let's continue celebrating. We need all of the applause this month to keep me from singing because I always want to, and it's always a bad idea. I have to remind myself of that, but happy birthday, June babies. Um, happy birthday to, to Pam and Tammy and Catherine and Jillian. And look at all of these June babies. Oh my goodness. Haley and Frankie and Jackie and Debbie and uh, Brittany and Bonnie and Troy and Heather and Cynthia and Vicky. Oh, my happy birthday to all of you. Hopefully you're popping by our summer kickoff party this afternoon so that we can celebrate with you appropriately and have a toast to another trip around the sun. A happy birthday, you guys, and happy work anniversary to uh, some of our uh, family members who've been with us another year. It's an honor to be in business with you, Troy, Ismail, Linda, and Brettland. So yay, guys, one more year. And congratulations and welcome to the team. Some of our new associates joining the Ben Kenny team, Denver, Cassandra Reed, welcome. Uh, welcome, Mr. Jimmy Austin. Congratulations, Jimmy. It's been an honor to get to know you and your journey into real estate. And we're so excited to have you uh, join our family here. Um, and welcome to Crystal Green. Uh, Crystal's transitioning into real estate from a, a long career in early childhood education. Um, so Crystal, welcome to, welcome to Keller Williams. We're honored to be in business with all of you guys. Um, and Brent Bice. Brent is joining us as a dual career agent as he gets started. So uh, welcome Brent to our KW family. Congratulations on capping in May, Ryan Davis. Um, um, not to disappoint, you capped in one month this year. Congratulations um, in capping in May. All right, um, let's dive into some more celebrations. Man, May was an incredible month. I've got to tell you guys, um, we the business that you're doing right now is just incredible. The way our new agents are getting started, the way our, our experienced agents are dominating in this market. Um, congratulations to Rajane on your first listing. Rajane uh, joins us. Um, earlier this year and took her first listing in May. Congratulations. Also, Thank congratulations to John Belknap, who um, also took his first listing in May. Congratulations, John. All right, Miss Teresa Coffey, my friend, congratulations on uh, closing your first listing in May. Um, also, Kathy, closing your first listing in May. And Kevin, uh, really cool story. This listing Kevin closed was actually a for sale by owner. So he went right out there. And not only was it his first listing, um, but it was also a for sale by owner he was able to convert. Um, way to go, Kevin. Uh, very awesome um for you and mary closing your first listing as well congratulations mary um closing our first buyer it's Sienna with the ben kenny team congratulations and john closed his first buyer too busy month for john congratulations sir such an honor to be in business with you my friend and anahi closed her first buyer as well you guys are rocking and rolling donna's been busy <laughs> she's been really busy helping you guys out i love it oh well you know is something to something to always consider um, inside of Keller Williams is you have an opportunity to create a legacy worth leaving. If you'll remember all the way back to the beginning of our team meeting, right? A legacy worth leaving. For some of us, that means earning passive income through profit share. 
you know, um, um, profit share is our owner's way of thanking you for introducing somebody to Keller Williams because we grow by word of mouth instead of, you know, television commercials and magazine ads and all of those things. We grow because agents like you make an introduction to um, um, to to other agents and, and we get into business together. As a result of that, you earn a thank you gift we call profit share. It's your unfair share. And congratulations uh, in the month of May to our top five profit share earners, uh, Ms. Cheryl Sartain and Donna Evans. And uh, uh, oh, look, I'm on the list. Yay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> And Donna and Matt Talafuse, congratulations, you guys, um, on earning uh, your unfair share in May. That's really exciting. We also go into the business we're all in, right? Profit share is a happy accident. It's the icing on the cake. It is your unfair share. But what really makes your business thrive is taking listings. So congratulations to the top five listors in the month of May. Tom Hennessy, um, Ryan Davis, um, Team Colorado Vistas, the Success Group, and the Distinct Group, all with multiple listings in the month of May top five written volume. This is your future business. This is getting your clients under contract, which y'all are exceptionally good at. Um, I know it's a tough market, but you wouldn't know it by looking at your numbers, right? Congratulations to the success group, Team Colorado Vistas, the Ben Kinney team, Tom Hennessy, and the distinct group on having an awesome May. All right. And here's what it is at the end of the day right? It's the, the gross commission income. It's the paycheck. It's the sold. It's that awesome picture with your client and the sold sign, right? Top five sold in the month of May. Uh, Ryan and Company, the Geyer Group, Irene Schick, the Distinct Group, and Mr. Harrison Baker. Congratulations, you guys. What an incredible month. All right. How are we looking year to date? Look at this in the top 10, Gwen, you're, you're still in there. You've had an incredible year. Uh, number five and our top individual agent year to date, Gwen Ham, um, um, rounding out the Geyer Group, Ryan and Company, the Distinct Group and the, the Success Group, rounding out the top 10, Mr. Harrison Baker, Lauren Cross, who's had an incredible couple of months as well. Miss Irene Schick, great to see you here on the leaderboard. Uh, the Ben Kinney team, Denver, with our very own Kelly Spencer, who I, I believe had to hop off, and Team Colorado Vistas. Congratulations, you guys, on an awesome month. Obviously, this afternoon, we are getting together face to face in real life for our summer kickoff party. I can't wait to see you guys at two o'clock. Um, your, your family's welcome. Come pop in at the very least, say hello. Um, get to meet some of the folks that, um, that we've been in business with over the past several months that we haven't had a chance to meet and have community around. So um, I'm really excited to be able to share all of that with you guys um, and to see you all today um, at two o'clock. Some things coming up to take note of. Tuesday the 15th at 10 a.m. Um, uh, uh, Lo Ann with Nations Lending is going to be um, teaching a, a, a credit education class so that you can be aware of how, um, how credit impacts your purchaser's ability to buy and what you can do to help them get on the path to home ownership um, if they have some, some obstacles to overcome there. Um, next week, our team meeting will be our final script off before the final round on the 30th. So if you've been considering participating or looking for your spot in the finals, make sure you're here next week um, from 11 to 12. Um, we'll be looking at numbers. We'll have the, the uh, main numbers uh, on the real estate market, how we're trending, where we're heading. Um, so definitely take a peek at that. And we're going to be sharing a very special session from Gary Keller from his life series. Um, also on June 17th, which is next Thursday, is the Evolve Tech event. Amy, tell me a little bit about this Evolve event. 
So we're going to have some of our biggest industry leaders um, come and join us and talk about um, where we are in our technology, how we can best use our technology, what advantages we have um, in our technology. And so um, I think it's going to be super fun, super, super exciting. Um, and yeah, I think everybody should be there because you'll get firsthand um, updates from our very own Jason Abrams um, and our uh, regional tech trainer, Leslie, and so many others. You're muted, Anna. Of course I am. That's an online event, right? Um, it and is. where do I get more information on that? So we have sent out some emails, um, but you can also, um, I'll drop the, the link in here, um, evolvetechevent.com, I believe. Um, and um, I'll also be sending out more information. It'll be in the newsletter and in the tech newsletter. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And then uh, just a reminder there will be closed on June 18th for Juneteenth, and that is next Friday. Um, Mega Camp is coming up, right? Our scriptors are competing for this VIP Mega Camp experience um, a little later than usual this year, August 23rd through 26th. Um, tickets will be released very soon, but you can go to megacamp.kw.com now to get on the list to get an email alert when, um, when those tickets are released. Mega Camp will also launch our, um, um, our back to school event in August and September. So be on the lookout for lots of in-person learning opportunities for Mega Camp, hybrid style classes where we have both an in-person and a Zoom component. Um, when you come into the office this afternoon, you'll get to see some of the first stages of our training room transformation as we are re-outfitting this to, um, to provide the best hybrid learning experience. Um, so we're excited to see you guys all this week. Um, if you don't know already, um, Mega Camp is, is kind of a big deal. Um, every year, Keller Williams holds two large real estate conventions. In fact, they're the largest conventions in all of real estate. Um, we launched the year with our family reunion. Family reunion um, is a training and education mega event um, that happens in February. And then mid-year, we get together for Mega Camp. Mega Camp is all about building a mega business and learning from others who are doing the same. Um, you'll find lots of opportunities to, um, to learn from some of the top in business, top producing agents, what they're doing, what are their secrets to success. And um, uh, they always bring this in a very, very relevant kind of topic based um, um, with relevant topic based content and panels. And so what you'll find is if you are looking to get better at, say, open houses or um, lead generation ideas or um, um, growing your business through events or meeting new people, whatever that is you're looking to really grow your business. And literally the best in the industry will be on stage and on screen walking you through what they do. What are their secrets to success? Um, it, it's one of the greatest events you can go to. Um, ticket prices will likely be in the $100 range for early bird pricing. I don't know exactly, but I would anticipate that for your budget. You won't need any airfare or hotel or even any dining or entertainment costs because you'll be able to participate virtually um, and um, in a hybrid style experience here at the Market Center as well. So definitely look for Mega Camp um, um, coming towards the end of August. Hey, Donna, do you have anything for us today? Uh, just quick reminders that we do have um, a contract class on Monday at 12 o'clock. I would also uh, encourage all these season agents not to stop putting NAs in your contract. Uh, you void out the paragraph that you use. It is a big deal. And so all your, con your contracts should have the word none or leave it blank because you guys, I review them and I'm trying to give you reminders, but don't put NAs in your contract. It's very, very bad. Um, also on August, uh, hang on just a minute, I'll tell you, on August 
I think it is uh, the 11th, and it is from one to four at Smedra. I will be giving a contracts class for four hours CE credit. So it would be great if whoever can come, you can register through um, Smedra and it's CE credit. And if you belong to Smedra, it will be free. And I want to congratulate all the newbies that I, I mentor, I mean, my uh, PC people, because they are doing awesome, just awesome. Two more uh, got under contract uh, over the weekend and yesterday. So I'm really excited for them. So they're doing great. That is awesome. Congratulations to you guys. What a, what a great way to launch summer and to finish off your weekend. Well, um, we've got a special treat for you guys. We're going to bring a couple of these throughout the, throughout the summer to the team meeting um, so that you can, you can check them out because a lot of people aren't aware that um, seriously, a couple of times a month, you can spend time with Gary Keller. Um, he does a phenomenal series on KW Connect called Lifeline, L-Y-F-E. Um, and so I would love to, um, and I'm going to get this going here. There's a short session that he did not long ago about the myth understandings in real estate, and it is incredibly powerful. Um, it's just over 10 minutes long, and it's just the right size to finish off our team meeting. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let Gary finish this off for today, and I can't wait to see y'all um, at 2 p.m. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Lifeline, Living Your Future Every Day. I've got my rock star partners with me, Monica, Jay, and Jason. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey. Good to see you. Monica, you didn't wave. <laughs> I did a half. I did a queen wave. Ah, nice. Okay, so Jason, so we're gonna um, we're gonna start with you. So for the the this month, um, every session we're going to uh, sync up and talk about your favorite page or your favorite two ideas uh, currently off the top of your head in MREA. So we'll start this this session and with you, fire away, my friend. What's on the top of your mind about MREA? I love the chapter. It starts on page 47. It's called Myth Understandings. Okay, page 47, yep. Myth Understanding. We're all turning to that page. And well, what, does that, what does that grab you? Well, well, if there's two things I love about this section, and I'd love to hear you and Jay kind of talk on both. The first one is this idea that myth understandings exist and simply how damaging they can be. Oh, yeah. Because I, it, it hadn't really occurred to me how important it is, but you put it early on in the book. And this, the one that grabs me that I hear, and I still hear it after 21 years every day, it can't be done in my market. Yeah. It's different here. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll jump in first. And then Jay, uh, climb on. The myth understandings are very real. The, the, that's a play on word, right? Misunderstandings, myth understandings. But it's a very real thing. In fact, we, we have these lies that we carry in our head or these half truths that, again, they, they, they hold you back. And a lot of people don't even realize that. Right. They don't realize that the, the way you think uh, puts a lid on your opportunities because it, it defines how you you take action. So. Jay, I'll pass it to you, but myth understandings are very real. And by the way, if you don't examine yours, if you don't, if you don't address them, they lurk uh, uh, right in your backpack, right? They're in your closet. They're, they go to bed with you at night. They, they live with you and they make base camp in your head and they limit your life. Yeah. And I remember the origin of this. Um, one of the books that got us together as partners was a book I worked on in the 90s called Body for Life by Bill Phillips. And I remember when you were saying one of the reasons you liked it, besides you were 
into health was that there was a section on, th- I think he called it myths and truths. And when you were originally explaining to me, you used the idea in real estate that people have objections. And a lot of times their objections are not founded on facts. And I like the idea of launching our book with some objection handlers. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing massively here, Gary, right. but this was kind of a conversation with me, you and Dave. It's like, so what are the biggest objections that people have to big success? And we came up, I think it was Dave, like let's combine myth and myth understandings are you. One of you came up with the clever way for us to put it. But I always see these sections, the lies and the one thing, the myths and this and the millionaire real estate investor. What are the common objections that we should overcome before we try to teach them what they need to know so that they're fully engaged? And the one, Jason, that I, I it's the first one for a reason. It's the I can't do it. Like if I could strike one phrase from the human language, it would be that phrase. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it stops so many people in their tracks. And the Bannister story, you know, the four minute mile, I'd never heard before we wrote this. And it remains an inspiration to this day, especially when you realize that John Landy, who had been trying for years to break it, after seeing Bannister do it, did it just two months later. Yeah. All he, it clearly, it was in his head, removed that objection, and he was able to break through as well. Yeah, well, I think the trap of, I think the trap on that one, you guys, on I can't do it, is be really careful. Because in order to maximize your potential, you have to be executing. We'll take Bannister as an example. You have to be executing um, a plan that has massive potential. So the you know the the biggest mistake that we make is we set a one year goal and then we build a plan for one year instead of setting a lifetime goal and then asking what would this year look like on the path to it. And it's the biggest mistake that we make about goal setting. I had that aha. I was rereading that in preparation. And I had forgotten that Bannister's technique is that at lunchtime, he broke the four minute mile and he tried to do a sub one minute mile multiple times in a row with like three minutes of rest. So he broke down the big goal into a manageable target which is goal setting to the now. It's, it's something that you've taught us much later. I was like, wow, this has so many lessons tied up in like two paragraphs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, the, the problem that people understand is that, and we write about this, Jason, is that um, uh, if you set an incremental goal and then create an incremental plan, give enough credence to is that you've built a box around the way you think about your habits about your relationship, about your systems, everything that you are built, your whole operation is built around that goal. And by the way, the the people that you hire, big issue here, because because you'll, you'll see a lot of top producers go higher to the moment instead of hiring to the end result. And as a result, they have a they fall in love with their per- people. They have great people, and those people put a, a complete ceiling around that. Look, I'm I make no mistake about it. I'm um, I'm pretty famous for getting in and out of relationships, in the sense of um, I do my best to to go into business with the person that I think is is a great match to succeed for themselves and for us. But I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna I, I'm 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 gonna pull the 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 plug on it. For their sake and for ours, if we're not hitting, if we're not going to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. That that this this idea, and because there's not that many, at least in the book, myth understandings, but the ones that you hit on are giant. Like, tell us and, about and, the market one. It sounds like that was a trigger for you. What what? How does that show up for you, Jason? That's a trigger for me because I've literally sat in all of these mastermind rooms where someone will say an idea, and instantly there's a cohort in the room that says, "Well, that won't work." I am, but then you'll show up 90 days later into the same room and someone else in your market has done it and and made it work. And that I watched that consistently through my time in that room. And Monica, I think you can speak directly to this idea, this myth that if it's not me, my customers won't be happy. Yes. And then just going back to the market, we the the myth is always out there. Well, it's a, we have a seasonal market, you know, and that, that is one of the biggest ones that we bust through right away in, in coaching. The second part of this, though, is that 
every single agent thinks that that client, when they first start, that relationship is with them. And once they realize, and what I realized, and every agent who hires their first assistant is that, oh my gosh, they do it better than me. And you have your standards, you have your procedures that are duplicatable and scalable. And your job is that you go out, you lead generate, you go on appointments, you write contracts. That's your job. And you've got the other person that is your absolute partner in business that does it better than you. A salesperson's job description doesn't say you're great at paperwork. You're great at details. Most great salespeople aren't. They need that backup. Yeah. Well, let me back up uh, before we get out of here. The, uh, let's talk about that market for a second again. The issue there, and we say it, and that is you're, you may have to try a different approach. So what a lot of people do is they, they go after something and they go, well, I tried to do it. And you go, well, how many different ways did you try? Did you try one way? Did you try two ways? Or did you try 10 or 20? Because if you didn't try, try 10 or 20, go away. I mean, go just go away, right? Because you're making us all dumb listening to you. But you need to It's like a certain teenager at my dinner table is, oh, I've had that before. I don't like it. Well, you can try it again, right? Yes, it's it's in the chicken family, but this is prepared differently. You will try it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my point. Yeah, my point here is that um, you you may have to change a little bit about who you are. In other words, the way you behave may be a ceiling. The way that you're approaching it may have a ceiling. You're you're going to have to mess with it. You're right. You're going to mix and match. You're going to play with this, right? And you don't give it a year and two years and three years. If you you give it a period of time, pick it. I don't care. Six months, 90 days, two weeks. I, I don't care. You set a limit, you hit it hard, and then you look and you judge. And then you tweak, 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 right? I was always amazed, and to put a bow on that, when someone would have this idea and either you would look up in your own business, and I remember saying, that's going to take too much work. I, all of these myths come in. Even if your seasons, they're keeping them out. They just show up. Mm-hmm. And then it never fails. Next year, this time, someone had taken that idea and was had tripled their business, doubled their world. Yeah. there's a, the, um, We'll end on this note. And that is, uh, if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. And these myth understandings are about arguing for your limitation. These are all these myth understandings are all the reasons why you can't do something. And if you buy into those, then congratulations, this is your life. All right. I actually used here. that line on one of my teenagers no, literally last that. night. So thank you for putting that in my lexicon, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're out of here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. You guys are amazing. It is almost 12 o'clock. Remember what Gary said. If you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. You guys are a powerful group of business people out there changing lives through real estate. It's an honor to be in business with you. And we will see you this afternoon at two o'clock. Take care, guys.